Um, it's tough for me to, like, I don't want you to take it out of context, like that. Too late. You break up within two years of your engagement, then the ring has to go back to production. What? Before The Bachelor contestants can find love, they have to read the fine print. There are tons of rules they're expected to follow in order to make the show as perfect as possible. Make it a close race. Have you ever noticed that it always seems to be a close call when it comes to picking a winner on The Bachelor? Well, that's because contestants are required to act like it's a tough decision in order to make the show more exciting. Trista Sutter was on the very first season of the show and found her now husband Ryan on The Bachelorette, but she admits she often withheld affection from him because she could couldn't make her favoritism obvious without breaking her contract. Hannah Brown fans are hoping that's the situation with Peter Weber, who asked her to stay on the show. This is so insane. What would you say if I, I asked you to be part of the house? I mean is he so head over heels for Hannah that nobody else stands a chance? If so, he'll have to hide it until the final episode. Time commitment. Being on The Bachelor means being on call for a period of time ranging from six months to a year, even if your season doesn't follow the typical formula. When Colton Underwood stunned everyone by leaping over a fence to follow Cassie Randolph, the show didn't end because he was still under contract. I feel more confused than ever. Producers have the final say on contestants' schedules, so even though Colton switched things up, he was still obligated to appear on the show and any promotional materials that needed to be filmed. Yeah, I'm under oath. I'm also under contract. <laughs> Even if contestants don't make escapes like Colton, this time commitment can make it difficult on their careers. When you get to take off work and, you know, when everything's paid for, it's kind of hard to, you know, not have a good time. They either need to take a leave of absence or quit their position in order to make it onto The Bachelor. Reshoots. Sometimes The Bachelor captures amazing moments between two people, but the lighting is all wrong. We all know contestants agree to have their lives filmed 24-7, but they also have to reshoot any scenes that the cameras don't perfectly capture. Reality Steve shared some videos on Twitter of Peter Weber's one-on-one -on -one date with Kelsey Weir. The footage showed multiple scenes of the pair leaving the exact same place, making it clear that the crew was trying to capture the perfect shot of Peter and Kelsey, no matter how many reshoots were necessary. Continuity is important, so Contestants are sometimes asked to put on old clothes or reapply makeup a certain way in order to recreate events which happened at another time. Don't plan dates. Planning dates is one of the few things contestants don't have to worry about because they're not allowed to. That's right, Peter Weber didn't write that look up date card himself, the producers did. According to former Bachelor director and co-executive producer Jason Carbone, the date cards were devised to add some mystery and excitement to the show. The Bachelors can't come up with their own dates, so it's not Colton's fault that some contestants ended up eating bugs in a jungle in Thailand. Must take risks. Normal dating involves risking your heart, but contestants on The Bachelor often end up putting their physical safety at risk too. Part of the terms and conditions they have to sign off on explicitly state that they may be exposed to serious injury, illness, or disease, and or property damage. Peter Weber took some ladies on a group date to flight school, and the gyroscope portion had Victoria P feeling queasy. But even The Bachelor himself didn't escape the season unscathed after suffering a freak accident on a golf course while filming. According to Chris Harrison, Peter ended up with a cut on his head and some stitches but was able to recover and is still the dashing handsome pilot we've all dreamed of. Thank goodness. Age limits. There have been tons of spin-offs of The Bachelor, including The Bachelorette, Bachelor Pad, and Bachelor in Paradise, just to name a few. But let's not forget about the many international versions of the show, and each one comes with unique age requirements. To compete on The Bachelor Australia, women must be between the ages of 23 and 35, while the men have to be between 25 and 35. The Bachelor Canada skews a little younger, and contestants must be at least 19 years old to be on the show. In the American version, contestants have to be at least 21 years old and the average age of female contestants is 26, while the average age of male contestants is 29. Hidden cameras. Contestants have to deal with cameras in their face, but it's the hidden cameras that had Colton Underwood worried. Applicants sign on to be recorded via audio and video 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and while some of the recording devices are obvious, others are not. The only place contestants have privacy is in the fantasy suite, but Colton Underwood wasn't taking any chances. Um, I will say like the fantasy suite was the most pivotal week 
of my journey. Jimmy Kimmel asked what happened to his microphone during this portion of the show, and Colton revealed... I checked the rooms. You did? Did you really? Yeah. You did a search of the room? Of course. He did a thorough search of the fantasy suite to ensure that there were absolutely no secret recording devices tucked away somewhere. No spoilers. At the end of The Bachelor, the happy couple can finally be together when their contract says so. Seeing them in public together would spoil the ending of the show, so they're forced to keep their relationship a secret until the series finale. Colton loved Cassie so much he chased after her when she left, but they still had to keep their relationship on the down low. But now that the episode has aired and the secret's out, he's free to show off his Cassie travel pillow on Instagram. Face it, this guy is smitten. Must be single. Being single seems like a basic requirement for taking part in a dating competition, but The Bachelor has strict requirements about what constitutes a relationship. Even if you're separated or in the process of divorcing, being married is a no-go. Living with a romantic partner is another way to get disqualified and any monogamous relationship longer than two months eliminates people from consideration. But even though this rule is supposedly strict, it's hard for producers to verify whether potential contestants are really single or not. An anonymous source confided to Us Weekly that Tasia Adams was dating her ex-boyfriend Chase Olswang up until she left to appear on The Bachelor. The insider claims Tasha and Chase were even talking about marriage right up until filming started. Give the ring back. Everyone who appears on the show claims they're looking for love, but the five figure piece of jewelry is definitely a nice bonus. But unfortunately, unless they actually say I do, they have to give it up. According to Chris Harrison, there's a rule covering those gorgeous Neil Lane diamond engagement rings. If the engagement doesn't last for at least two years, then the ring has to be returned. Bachelor in Paradise alum Katie Morton and Chris Bukowski got engaged on the show, but their relationship didn't make it until the two-year cutoff. Career limitations. Some members of Bachelor Nation stick around for all the spinoffs, but produce Producers get the final say on which reality shows they can sign up for. Would-be contestants must disclose during the application if they're involved with any other reality shows either currently or in the past. And since ABC owns both The Bachelor and Dancing with the Stars, there ends up being a lot of crossover. Hannah Brown may not have found love on her season of The Bachelorette, but she did win the dance contest. I look at being on Dancing with the Stars as like just a fresh start. And it looks like ABC plans on keeping her around, at least for now. No priors. Surprisingly, having a criminal background doesn't automatically disqualify you from being on the show, but having a felony sure does. Fans were surprised to learn that Elise Delbaum has been arrested and was still allowed to appear on The Bachelor, but that's because her offenses were just able to get around the rules. In addition to some serious traffic citations like driving with a suspended license, Elise was found guilty of driving under the influence and given a 30-day sentence of which 28 days were suspended, as well as some community service. But because her first DUI offense was a misdemeanor, she was still able to compete for Colton's affections. Anyone with restraining orders filed against them or misdemeanors involving acts involving moral turpitude or violence aren't allowed to appear on The Bachelor. Declared a villain, the cameras are always rolling on The Bachelor, but producers have the right to edit that footage in any way they see fit, even if it makes someone look like a downright villain. Just ask Catherine Agro. I'm sorry if I stepped on those toes and I'm sorry if I like insulted anyone. Fellow contestant Onyeka Ehie confronted her about coming across as desperate and rubbing people the wrong way by seemingly monopolizing Colton Underwood's time. It was clear that Catherine was made out to be a villain, but that's well within the rules she signed up for. The show has the right to use recordings even if they're embarrassing, unfavorable, humiliating, and or derogatory. They can also edit footage to portray him or her in a false light. According to Catherine, she was given less time with Colton than the other women and was just trying to even the playing field. But that's not how it came across on the show. Spend money. Contestants on The Bachelor are required to provide their own wardrobes and makeup, and these expenses can quickly add up. E! News estimates that female contestants spend up to four or five times the amount their male counterparts do in order to appear camera ready. Sarah Heron and Taylor Nolan claim that being on Bachelor in Paradise is a little easier on the budget since they only have to buy swimsuits and sundresses. Marik Mathias admitted to spending $70 on false eyelashes because she was worried about running out while the cameras were still rolling. But too much much splurging can rub people the wrong way. Marik Mathias claims she was glam shamed by her fellow contestants for looking too good. A judgment based on 
what I look like, about who I am. Rose Ceremony For the audience, the rose ceremony is one of the most exciting, nail-biting parts of each episode. But for contestants, it can be absolutely exhausting because it lasts way longer than you might think. Showing up for this ceremony is mandatory, and filming is a lot more complex than what you see on TV. According to former Bachelor Sean Lowe, each time a rose is handed out, all 15 cameras need to get back into position to film the next rose. This drags out the process, and Sean claims that the initial rose ceremony lasts until about 7 o'clock in the morning. After that, contestants can expect to be up until only 3 or 4 a.m. Even though the crew's need to get the perfect shot can be cumbersome, they do help out The Bachelor by reminding him of everyone's names in between takes. What do you think about the rules these Bachelor contestants have to follow? Are they essential for making quality television, or do they go too far? Let us know what you think in the comment section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at The Taco. Bye for now!